Is it possible that a third-party add-in board could scare Apple to the point of modifying the Apple Talk protocol stack? Yes, it is. This is a Radius Rocket, a 33 MHz 68040 accelerator for Nubus-based Macintoshes. The Rocket can run in two different modes, a host accelerator called Rocketware mode or a multiprocessing mode called Rocket Share. The host accelerator mode was the first to launch on the market, actually before the official Macintosh Quadra did in 1991. So Radius beat Apple to the punch in equipping the Macintosh with the 68040. The Rocket Share mode launched later on and allowed you to run multiple sessions of macOS within the same Macintosh. So if you had two Radius Rockets, you could run three copies of macOS and split tasks up among them. The Radius Rocket has its own 68040 CPU, memory controller, memory, and a PDS expansion bus. Available for the PDS expansion bus was a very fast SCSI 2 booster which gave you a SCSI 2 port on the back of your Macintosh. As a result, you could give your Rocket its own dedicated hard disk. Also available for the Rocket was a Photoshop booster, which was a dual DSP card to accelerate certain functions in Adobe Photoshop. For this video, we'll be taking a look at the Rocket and Rocketware mode in a Macintosh 2CX. This allows you to run System 6 on a 68040, which is a blazing fast experience. Let's refer to the Radius manual to see how this board works. First, I would like to point out the cover of this uh, manual. It's pretty hilarious. You can see, come on, out of focus. There is a turtle on the display of the Macintosh 2, which is strapped to a gigantic rocket. Uh, Radius definitely was being clear how fast this will make your system compared to how it normally is. First, let's take a look at this claim performance table. As you can see, the Rocket 33 has significantly higher performance than either a Macintosh 2FX, 2CI, or Plane 2. Radius states that it's up to four times the speed of a Macintosh 2FX for quick draw, and up to five times the speed of a Macintosh 2FX for floating point. Quadra level performance in a Macintosh 2. Here is a typical Macintosh 2 without an accelerator card. As you can see, there is a speed loss when the host processor has to speak to the RAM or to the new bus. This is just due to the way Apple designed the system board. The Rocket resolves these bottlenecks. There is no bottleneck for a new bus card to speak to another new bus card thanks to new bus block transfer. Radius designed the memory on the Radi Rocket to be extremely fast. It is interleaved, and as a result, the processor doesn't have to sit around waiting for data from the memory. When your system is being run by the Rocket, the host processor is actually still active. It handles low-level input outputs such as serial, ADB, floppy, and SCSI. Here is the inside of our subject Macintosh, a Macintosh 2CX. I have recapped the Macintosh 2CX partially with new polymer caps and partially with new tantalum caps. A new clock battery has been installed. We have 8 megs of RAM on the logic board. Here is the 16 MHz 68030. Here is the math coprocessor. And here is the new chip Nubus controller. Here's the system glue logic. Here's the Apple sound chip, and here is the onboard system ROM, which is not 32-bit clean. Let's start with new best cards. The first card we'll be installing is this Assant Ethernet card. It is a 10 base T card, and I'm going to put it in the outermost slot. The second card we'll be installing is a SuperMac Thunder 24, a nice accelerated 24-bit display card. If you're wondering what those SIM slots are on the Thunder 24, those are for G-World memory. It's used to accelerate certain applications. I do not have any of the special memory that goes in those slots.
as you can see there's plenty of VRAM on the video card itself. And last but not least, the star of today's show, the Radius Rocket, which I'm putting in the innermost slot for cooling reasons. The 68040 does get quite warm. Next we need to install the drive cage. Nice thing about the Macintosh 2CX and 2CI is that they're almost completely toolless. Here's the drive cage. It's just a large plastic carrier assembly. You move the cables out of the way and just drop it into place. And then slide it and it clicks into place. Now your drive carrier assembly is installed. All that's left is to connect the floppy drive cable, which is a bit of a pain. It's tight and you can't see the connector, but it is keyed. There we go. And now for the hard drive, which interestingly enough, is a Samsung unit. I tested it some time ago, so it should still be good. Just connect the power and the SCSI data cable. Tuck the power underneath that. If you're wondering where is the bracket for the hard drive, I do not have the hard drive bracket for this system. It sits pretty solidly in this plastic carrier. It doesn't move around much. If it's sitting on your desk, it's not a problem. If you were to ship the computer, this would be a problem. And the final component, the power supply. There are two different power supplies available for the 2CX and 2CI. Uh, the Ace Tech unit is known to fail. It doesn't fail catastrophically, but even after a recap, they're known to not work. It has to do with other components on the board that need replacing. The more reliable power supply of the two is the GE power supply. These do not need recapping as often, although they still can need recapping and they don't tend to fail. This one is still good even though it's from 1988. Is it from 1988? It is. There we go, it's clipped into place. This Macintosh 2CX was built in the Fremont, California factory and it was previously owned by Jenks Public Schools. No idea who that is. I bought this computer off of eBay years ago and I have some stickers in the back. 8 megs RAM, recap the logic board, power supply okay. There's our Ethernet with AUI, our display out, and our Rocket 33. The logic board gives us 280B, stereo audio out, two serial ports, a SCSI port, a floppy disk port, and a lockable power button. We are now going to install the top cover onto the 2CX. It just hinges into place. And that is it. A bit of a change from before. I got the original Quantum Pro Drive hard disk working. The platters were just stuck to the spindle. The spindle was seized. And by gently rotating the drive in my hand, I managed to get the platters to unstick and the drive works perfectly fine. I also changed the graphics card out for a Radius Direct Color GX, which is a much older but period correct display card. I was having issues getting colors in System Seven, in, sorry, System Six, with the newer Super Mac cards. There's a really high-pitched startup chime. The system is now running off of the 68040. Nice, fast startup. Let's take a look at the software that comes with the rocket. You have the rocket control panel, which allows you to turn on and off the rocket, turn on and off the RAM test, until leaving is on. It is a 33 megahertz rocket, not a 25, that's incorrect. Radiusware gives us some extra goodies like a screensaver and a screen capture, optional enlarged menu font, dynamic desktop, and specific settings for certain applications that might have compatibility issues with the 68040. 
Here's Quick CAD. It's a radius control panel for accelerating certain CAD applications. I do believe there is some extra hardware on the PCB of the rocket that enables this to do anything. And Quick Color accelerates a Quick Draw. Even if your graphics card does not have Quick Draw acceleration, your rocket will accelerate it instead, so you get much faster graphics redraw performance. As you can see, things just snap onto the screen basically instantly. The system is very responsive. There's no delay doing anything. Really cool. Right now, I don't really have much software installed on the machine. I need to move that over, but first I have to install the Ethernet drivers. Uh, file transfer speeds with Apple Share are really good with the rocket. I'm not seeing very much uh, lag. It looks like that new bus block transfer, along with the I.O. being handled by a separate CPU, really helps with uh, I.O. operations. Uh, anything involving the disk doesn't slow down the system whatsoever. Really nice. First we're going to start with a benchmark. We're going to run the drystone benchmark, which is written in C. We have to run a high number of runs because the benchmark will refuse to run with a low number of runs. We'll run this on the rocket and reboot and run it on the 2CX so you can see the performance difference. Drystone isn't a super excellent means of measuring performance, but it's one of the few benchmarks that runs on System 6. There are a lot more benchmarking suites for System 7. As you can see, the speed of the system rendering an image is quite speedy. Rotating is fast. And applying effects is reasonably quick as well. Pretty cool. Our next test is the Snooper Desktop Diagnostics. This is one of the few benchmark suites that's System 6 native, aside from Drystone. And the developers of Snooper benchmarked a bunch of Macintoshes in stock configurations and saved them into the program as references so we can do comparisons without rebooting the machine. Let's start with the math benchmarks. Starting with integer, we have a nice increase, 491%, almost five times increase in performance over a stock 2CX. Floating point, again, five to six times increase of performance, depending on if it's without or with the FPU. And mathematical functions, we get a really nice increase here. Uh, 21 kiloflops without the FPU, 45 kiloflops with the FPU. Very impressive, nice increase, very nice increase. Next is the memory benchmark. This is testing the memory bus, the interface between the system memory and the CPU. And the rocket's memory is 234% faster than a Macintosh 2CX's motherboard memory bus. Very nice performance increase. Let's see how that compares to a Macintosh 2FX. Slightly slower than a Macintosh 2FX. The reason for that would be the 2FX has a very special memory bus that uses a bunch of tricks to squeeze extra performance. Unfortunately, the memory for that system is custom and specific to that unit. It's very difficult to buy RAM for a 2FX. And against a Quadra 900, it's exactly like a Quadra. So, radios do not lie. The rocket gets you Quadra level performance. Very impressive. Next, the video benchmark. We're gonna do it at 256 colors. And we are going to compare it against 
Well, let's compare it against the Quadra 900 internal video. That's a very fast frame buffer. This old Radius Direct Draw is nothing to write home about normally. But keep in mind, this rocket is accelerating the quick draw routines. Very impressive. The old Nubus Radius Direct Draw card is hitting almost the same performance as a Quadra 900's internal video at the same resolution, 92% at 256 colors. Very cool. Now let's compare it against, let's see what other systems we have. Quadra 950 has the same frame buffer. Let's compare it against the 2CI. 212% faster than a 2CI's onboard video. And the other system I should pick. 317% faster than a 2CX with the generic Apple video card that comes shipped with the machine. I assume that to be the Toby. I am honestly surprised by those results. Ooh. That's classic Mac OS for you. We'll just fire up Snooper again. Hopefully you don't get a bomb error. Okay, everything's okay. I think. Yep. Lastly, let's do the CPU benchmark. We have a 423% increase in performance doing a sort. Compared to a Macintosh Quadra 900, that gets us 112%. So, in some scenarios, the rocket might actually be slightly faster than a Quadra. If you compare that against the Quadra 950, we're slightly under. The Macintosh 2FX, much faster. So the only area 2FX leads a Quadra over is memory bus performance. Probably because the memory bus in a 2FX runs at uh, 40 megahertz instead of 33 or 25 like it does in a Quadra. Let's do some audio tests. The rocket does break sound. Ooh. Okay. Well, evidently the rocket doesn't break all sound. Okay, we get it. And we have a total system crash. Fun. And we're back in business. Trying to get the camera adjusted again. There we go. The one last thing I wanted to try in Snooper, that is if it doesn't crash, is the disc test. I want to see the performance of the disc. Keep in mind, this is the original Quantum Pro Drive, 80 megabyte. It is not a speed demon, this drive, but with the host CPU being the 040 on the rocket, and we have a coprocessor 030 handling low-level I.O., we might actually see better performance than normal. I have no idea what the normal is for one of these old hard drives. Unfortunately, it's not giving us any comparison scores. 
but we're getting under one megabyte a second read write. Seek time in milliseconds isn't so bad on this old drive. That's actually pretty good. This is just some diagnostic tests you can run. We're not going to run those because the system is, in fact, working correctly. Next, let's take a look at our benchmarks running on the Host 2CX without the rocket. We're going to see a definite difference in the performance of the system. Startup takes a little longer, although it's still pretty quick, mainly because System 6 is a light operating system. Notice the rocket symbol is no longer at the top of the screen. I don't know why my tripod keeps shifting. Apologies for that. Let's run the dry stone benchmark again. This time running on the 16 MHz 68030. We might be here for a while. After a very long time, we got our results. 380 microseconds for one run, and only 2,631 dry stones per second. The rocket is much faster than the host 68030. We didn't need a benchmark to tell us this, but this just shows you how big the gap is. Now we're on Snooper. You're going to see all those nice video performance gains have probably been erased. I mean, even just loading Snooper takes longer than before. And just a reminder, the lack of the little rocket icon on the upper right hand side of the screen indicates that we're running off of the host 2CX. If we were running on the rocket, we'd have a little rocket symbol. It feels like this benchmark is running slower. It's the same display card, but you can see the difference in the host logic board having to shove data to the new bus versus the rocket, which is already sitting on the new bus. Having to go through a transceiver really slows things down. Yep, so we're exactly the same speed you'd expect on a 2CX. 107% of a normal 2CX. So the radius card is just slightly faster than Apple stock video, which I would expect. One final thing to share is the QuickTime 1.0 beta, which runs perfectly well on System 6. Sadly, it requires Sound Manager 2 for sound when being used with a Radius rocket. So I will demonstrate the rocket playing back QuickTime video. It's pretty smooth. These are samples that were included on the QuickTime beta CD. That's it for that.